start by welcoming everyone to the TMF for Sponsor Setup and Maintenance. Um, excited to be here today to share with you some of my experience and my background. My name is Donna Dorzinski, and I am your trainer for this morning. I have lots of years in drug development and compliance. I am a member of the steering committee for the TMF reference model, and I happen to also be the founder of Just In Time GCP. So I've spent the last 15 years of my career doing compliance consulting. So let's talk a little bit about our objective. So first thing we're going to do is talk about the changing regulatory climate and how we can apply that to essential documentation or TMF content. We will look at the different parts of a TMF, and I will talk to you a little bit about policy on TMF. And then we'll talk about how you can do ongoing TMF management and quality control of your TMF. So I'd like to start with this slide. Remember, if you didn't document it, quite frankly, you didn't do it. And so you can tell an inspector that you did it, but if you can't give them evidence that you actually did, they're not going to just accept that, that part of the story. So I want to talk a little bit about some rationale for why you as the sponsor should have an interest in this. First of all, your TMF is known as the story of your study. For those of you who have heard me speak, I talk about the TMF as the story of the study, the good, the bad, the ugly, because that's what it really is, right? So we know there's some bad stuff, and we know there's lots of good stuff. But that basically your TMF is your story of the study, and you as the sponsor have a critical concern around this, right? Because in the end, it is you that will need to speak to the inspector. Generally, we don't put our vendors in front of an inspector. We as the sponsors have that accountability. So even if your CRO is holding your TMF, which is the case in many organizations today, you as the sponsor still have a significant responsibility and accountability in how that is managed. We also know that the TMF is referred to in our Code of Federal Regulations, in our EU directives, and our ICH guidelines. And we also know that we're expecting an update to ICH. So, Story of your study. It's a standalone set of documentation that does not have to rely on the voice. So I can tell you a little story. It's a story about an inspection preparation where when we started, we had three TMS. Each TMS had a thousand documents in it. We worked like crazy for nine months. We part partnered with the CRO. We partnered with the site. We got all this content in the TMS. The inspection happened nine months later. The inspector was there for three days. We had two people talk to the, in, the inspector in an interview very briefly. And she, on the fourth day, she wrapped it up. She said, your TMS is awesome. I can find everything I'm looking for. It clearly tells the story of your study. A lot of effort went into making that happen, but it absolutely can be done. No problem at all. So you can make your TMS a standalone where you don't have to spend a lot of time in front of the inspector but it takes a lot of work. It is the part of the documentation that demonstrates your data integrity, your compliance, your subject safety. It's really the cornerstone of your inspection, right? So FDA doesn't acknowledge it as such, but certainly EMA and MHRA call the TMS the cornerstone of an inspection. And so while yes, you know, we always wanna make sure we're inspection ready, as a sponsor, it's also the evidence of how your asset was managed, right? And so your asset is your drug, and how the study was conducted is documented in the TMF. As you protect your asset, you know how your study is being managed. So what are essential documents? So essential documents per ICH are those documents that allow you to evaluate the conduct of the study, the quality of the data, compliance with GCP and all regulatory requirements. So that's for purposes of today, that's really our TMF, right? Because our TMF is what we need to tell the story. So back in the old days, we had our ICH E6 documents and they were in a little filing cabinet. But we now know that today it's way more than E6, right? We know we go well beyond that little blue filing cabinet in the back, back uh, office. It's explosive, if you will, in terms of volume of content. So before, the TMF was really about the trial management, right? ClinOps kept the TMF. Nobody really felt that they had access, that they contributed to the TMF. But now we know that it comes from safety and stats and data management and clinical supplies group. And really, anybody who's involved in R&D is contributing, even a TMF group, because they're contributing certificates of QC, a TMF plan, a TMF map. 
So pretty much everybody contributes to the TMS. So in the past, the expectations of TMS management were quite frankly not well defined, right? We were kind of relying on uh, other people to tell our story. With ICHE 6 R2, we actually got some more guidance on this. It said that the sponsor and investigator should maintain a record of the location of their respective essential documents. In my world, I call that a TMS map or index. So we have to have that TMS map or index in place, not only because it makes our job easier, because we now have a regulatory requirement for that. 